What's going on YouTube? So today we're in the most popular BMW, the BMW X3, and the latest iteration, the 2024 version. And with a sea of competitors in this luxury segment, we wanna know, is this still a great choice in 2024? That's what we're here to find out. Now, like always, we wanted to start off by opening the hood and talking about what you'll find underneath of it. This is gonna be a classic BMW configuration of powertrains, starting with this, the 30i, having a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, making 248 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. You do also have the M40i model with a 382 horsepower inline six cylinder if you want the higher performance X3. You do have an eight speed automatic transmission across the board. Standard rear drive with this 30i model, and as far as fuel economy is concerned, you're either at 25 or 24 miles a gallon combined. Now, of course, later on, we are gonna go for a test drive. When we go on that test drive, we're gonna get things like our signature sound level reading. That way we can compare just how quiet this is to all of its new competition. But first, let's close up the hood and see how this exterior design has aged. So I just asked, how well did this exterior age I have to say, very, very well. This is really still a great looking compact SUV in my opinion. It has all the signature BMW elements that you expect. They're actually kind of the more traditional styled BMW elements versus some of their newer models. And it looks nice and aggressive, especially when you have the M Sport package. So what do you have with that? You're gonna have those, uh, the gloss back finish, excuse me, here on your signature kidney grills. You're also gonna have the more aggressive finish down here on the lower fascia, also finished in gloss black. As we turn over here to our headlights, these are of course going to be full LED. They're also actually adaptive LEDs as well. And they've got all the signature BMW elements, including that classic uh, kind of daytime running light in the two different pieces. Now walking around to the rear design, we still have a very classic BMW look. It's gonna have you know, some pretty updated elements which are added in the last refresh in 2022. Yeah, and really the biggest part of that updated element would be your taillight design. This really is pretty much in line with the most modern BMW products, but let's see if all three elements are LED. We do like to test that out here at Car Confection. So we do have an LED brake light, LED turn signal, and LED reverse light. So all three elements are LED. And I do really like that this has a three-dimensional uh, shape to it. It really brings it in line with those updated BMW products. Now down here at the lower area you will notice because we have the M Sport model this is going to be a very aggressive diffuser area. We're also going to have dual integrated trapezoidal exhaust outlets. As far as your tow rating is concerned it's sitting at 4,400 pounds which is a pretty good tow rating for this segment of vehicle. Now just like any BMW you've got a lot of different choices for the wheel options. We have the 19 inch alloy wheels that are included with the M Sport package. If you don't like this design though, feel free to upgrade to 20 or 21 inch alloy options for something a little bigger. I think these look pretty good though, since they have a lot of contrast built into them. As we move, move up here to our mirrors, we do have some gloss black down here on the lower section of them. They're gonna be fully loaded with features. So we have auto dimming on the driver's side, power folding, blind spot monitoring, and heating. Now here at the side, the overall length of this vehicle remains 186.2 inches. And if you choose the M Sport model, you're gonna have a few more spicy elements going on here. Blacked out window surrounds as well as a blacked out roof rail up top. Now, when it comes to your safety systems, this is gonna be one area where it is lacking behind some of those newer competitors because you are gonna get two out of your four active safety features as standard equipment. However, you can still option on the more advanced systems through the driver's assistance professional package. But let's see how up to date the interior is. But before, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. Now let's go ahead and move on to the interior. First, of course, we'll take a look at the key fob. 
This isn't the brand new key fob, but it is a very nice design on board with this. You do have your M colors over here on the side as well. Smart entry is going to be on the vast majority of models. You'd also have digital key and phone as key if you want to enter your vehicle via those means. Otherwise, just grab behind the handle. That's going to unlock the door. Now, as Mason kind of comes into the interior to give you guys a look at that, let's start by talking about our cabin material and color choices. So you are going to come or have standard, excuse me, the Sensatec faux leather seats. That's what we have on today's example. You can also upgrade to real Vernasca leather if you prefer that. Regardless, though, you're going to have um, several choices of color. This, of course, is black, but you can get beige, cognac, and even a red option. As far as the seats themselves, we do have many ways of adjustment here. As you can see, you have four-way lumbar support as well and a manual thigh extension. Plus, your memory seats are going to be located up here on the door trim. But let's go ahead and climb inside. Now looking around the interior, of course the design is not going to be the latest and greatest, but the overall material quality is still very good for the segment. So let's start out over here in the door trim. We do have a leather material nicely padded through here as well as the center section. The top part is going to be a soft touch plastic and we have a, a kind of faux carbon fiber trim that's running below our ambient light strip. As we move to the upper dash, all this is going to be a nice solid uh, soft touch plastic. We have more of that trim that's going to run through here and then down here on your lower section This is going to be mostly finished in a piano black and a padded material along the edge where your knees will rest against Now to start it up your push button start is located right here next to the shifter Now, even though this doesn't have the uh, dual displays that are kind of connected like some other BMWs, this does still have virtual cockpit right there. This is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. It is going to be optional on this model. Very crisp and nice graphics and you can reconfigure various things. We also have a head up display on today's example as well. Now, as you pull back to the steering wheel, choosing the M Sport model will get you the beautiful M steering wheel, one of my favorite steering wheels in the auto industry, nice thick rimmed and nice leather covered airbag cover as well. The wheel itself is going to be manual tilt and telescoping. Heating is also available right there. Now turning over here to our center console, what you're going to see are some stuffed donuts. You know why? Because we do a thing called the donut test at Car Confections because that is our emblem. We want to see how many are going to fit inside of here. The answer is seven that is pretty good for this segment it's definitely not going to be the best but this is a very usable center console plus you have a usb-c inside otherwise you're going to be looking at some additional storage up there including a wireless phone charging pad this is optional for 500 dollars, by the way and then you have your two cup holders right behind that going back to the shifter we have an electronic shifter just pull back for drive bump to the left if you want to activate manual mode and you can control the shifts with these paddle shifters. Pressing up into reverse, this is gonna pull up a 360 degree camera system if you've chosen the parking professional package. Inside of this, you have the fun trick of going into a 3D view. The resolution is definitely a little less than what you get in like an X5 or an X7, but you do still have the cool 3D view. And then of course, you can just press the P right there to I go into park. And by the way, this does also have an automatic parking function as well. You get your drive modes behind the shifter, and then you have your control for the iDrive system. It is also a touchscreen. As we move up here, you've got your kind of classic um, full audio controls on this model. And we do have the optional Harman Kardon sound system. So let's go ahead and give it a sample right now. As you'd expect from a system with 16 speakers, this is a very nice sounding sound system. Really fills up the cabin um, well, has plenty of bass also. All right, so now we'll turn our attention to our main display here. So what you're gonna be looking at is a 12.3 uh, inch display here 
as the optional screen. We also have a standard 10 and a quarter inch display if you don't choose to have the navigation and the optional virtual cockpit, which I was showing you earlier. Inside of this display, we're not gonna have the very latest version of iDrive. This iDrive system does change very frequently. So even though it's not the latest version, it's gonna be very familiar to you. Um, you're still gonna have good performance. All the features you want as well, including wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, and the aforementioned built-in navigation system. As far as your climate controls, those are gonna be below the display. You do have physical buttons, so you can actually make those adjustments right there with this thing instead of being inside of the display itself in your newer models. And you're also gonna have a physical button to turn on and off your three-stage heated seats. Up top, we have an auto dimming mirror. Three Humlink Universal remotes are built into it. And we do have a power panoramic sunroof. Obviously, you've got a power sunshade, which will cover it up. And then the front panel does open up. Now here in the rear seats of the X3, you're gonna to continue to find a very nice place to spend time. That's something that certainly has aged very well with this product. So we're sitting at about 36 inches of leg room, about 39 inches of headroom, which does place it right in line with that all new Mercedes-Benz GLC. Um, it's just a good amount of space for this segment. I'm five foot nine for reference, and this seat is adjusted to Drew, who's five foot eight, and I, and I did bring my tape measure, and we're still sitting at about seven inches of knee space. Also, my feet can slide easily up underneath of the seat. One thing I wanna point out is that we were just in a BMW X5, and this is really no less space in the rear seat area than that model. Now, here in the center, we are gonna have standard vents for the X3. Additionally, we're also gonna have standard three zone climate control. So we have our own climate functions back here in the rear, which is also something not standard on the X5. Dropping below that, we have two USB-C ports. You can also get heated rear seats as an available option. If we fold down the central armrest, it's really stuck in there. Uh, we do have two pop-out cup holders and then checking out your door trim. The door trim is gonna be pretty nicely done. Soft touch on most of it. We have some more ambient lighting going through here as well as leather on pretty much all the rest of it. Down in the very bottom, we do also have quite a bit of uh, bottle storage, which is quite deep. And I do also wanna point out the rear seats do uh, recline a little bit. It's not a massive amount, but they do recline a little bit to give you a little extra comfort. Now walking up to the tailgate of the X3, we are gonna have a standard hands-free power one included if you get the smart entry system, which will of course be the vast majority of X3 models. And as far as the space is concerned back here, we are going to have a lot of it. 28 cubic feet of cargo capacity behind the second row seats. If we fold those down, we're looking at about 62 cubic feet as a maximum cargo capacity figure. That is going to be more than the Mercedes-Benz GLC, and really, it's a, just a good amount of space for this segment. It's gonna be more than the vast majority of the competition, and really not much less than the BMW X5 either. Now, as far as uh, the features back here, we don't have any handles to fold the second row seat, so I'm gonna have to go up there and fold them down manually. And after I've done that, you can see that they do fold 40-20-40 split folding, which is a nice premium bit. So you can actually have four passengers and still have that middle seat folded down. Additionally, we do have a nice cargo cover up top. Now I would get you my uh, measurement here, but the tape measure today has broken. So unfortunately I can't give you the cargo uh, measures. We can uh, give you a clip of the BMW X3 M40i that we tested out not long ago. So let's see how much space there is behind the driver's seat and the rear of the cargo area, 70 inches of space. Um, so that does mean since an average adult bicycle is 69 inches long, you could fit that in this X3's cargo area. Now, as far as up underneath of the floor itself, we do not have a spare tire on this model, but we do have a little bit of additional space up in the front of that. Well guys, here we are behind the wheel of the 2024 BMW X3. In this drive, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things, as you can see on the screen right now, including getting our signature sound level reading. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and start with the hard acceleration. Nice. The X3 has always been a very spunky vehicle. Um, when it comes to you know how 
Germans compared to the competition, the three German offerings tend to be quite a bit faster than anything else yeah. on the market. That does continue for 2024. Yeah, it's very punchy. And this, of course, is the standard model. This is the 30i. So you're looking at a 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. 248 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque for this model, which um, that's pretty decent uh, power figures. That is going to be uh, slightly behind some of the other competition when it comes to horsepower and torque, um, namely something like a uh, Acura RDX is going to have a little bit more horsepower. Also, the Lexus NX uh, 350 will have more power as well. Yeah, and when you accelerate there, one thing I do want to point out, um, like I said, it is slightly uh, less horsepower than some of those main rivals, but it's a very refined engine note, and that's something that I truly appreciate about this X3 model is that it's not going to be loud and unrefined, which is something that I do find uh, that bothers me on the Lexus NX. It's going to have a really smooth uh, note to it, regardless of how hard you are accelerating. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this version is not going to be electrified in any way. If you choose the uh, M40i model, that of course is going to upgrade the performance quite a bit. It is going to be a mild hybrid at that point, and it's going to be using a six-cylinder engine instead. Like I said, um, well, that's BMW's iconic uh, B58 engine at that point, so it sounds very, very good oh, yeah. as well. We drove that one um, not really that long ago. Yeah, about, about three or four months ago. So if you want to watch an M40i specific review, uh, you can find that on the channel. Um, if you have the extra dollars to spend, I would certainly recommend getting the M40i. Uh, that car has a very spe special spot in my heart because that engine and powertrain setup is very, very good. As far as the transmission is concerned, you do have an 8-speed automatic transmission. Performance of this transmission, nice and smooth. Also good crisp response, um, which is nice considering this is a German vehicle, even though it is a mainstream vehicle. Yeah, and as far as your 0 to 60, it's going to be about 6 seconds for this 30i model and 4.4 seconds with the M40i. But now that we're going 55 miles per hour, we'll go ahead and get our sound level reading, one of our signature elements. Settled in at 53.3 decibels. Very, very impressive sound level reading. Uh, but I don't have to sit here and guess because I can actually just go to carconfections.com and we have a sound level readings page where we've compiled all the cars that we've reviewed so you can see how this vehicle compares to some of those rivals. And as far as how that compares to the rivals, that places this X3 at a very consistently top performing vehicle in the segment. Um, it is point, uh, a tenth of a decibel louder than the M40i that we tested out, the 2023 model, but that actually places it as number two in the entire segment. So very impressive sound level reading. This is gonna be a very quiet option in this segment. Now, I do also want to point out that you do have standard rear drive for the 30i model, optional all-wheel drive. Uh, for the M40i, it is going to be locked into all-wheel drive exclusively. As far as your fuel economy, that's going to be sitting at 25 or 24 miles a gallon combined for this 30i model. Now, I do want to take a second here and talk about your ride quality with this X3. Uh, we're just here in the standard model, so we don't have an adaptive suspension or anything along those lines. And the ride quality is pretty good. Um, I really don't have any problems with it. When you hit a bump, you can feel some intrusion inside of the cabin. And these seats are going to be a little bit more on the firm side, but certainly uh, not in a bad way. I think it's actually a very comfortable overall experience. And I think a lot of you guys will appreciate uh, the ride quality that you're going to find here on the X3, especially when you balance it with the driving dynamics of this model. Right, exactly. Um, you know, BMW is going to make sure that every vehicle they make, even when it's not targeting a sporty audience per se, does have a little bit of that German athleticism baked into it. I do think that's the case with this. Um, steering in a normal drive mode is going to be light, but direct and very responsive. And overall, body control is nicely done as well. 
And let's get into today's slam dunk and air ball. Drew, why don't you kick us off with the slam dunk? Slam dunk today is going to be the fact that this is aged very gracefully. This is an older model at this point, but you really can't tell. BMW's done a great job of, I think, keeping almost everything up to date, um, particularly in the design and stuff. You may you might even prefer this older design that's maybe a less controversial than some of the new stuff that's coming out. And, you know, overall, I think that this is very easy to enjoy for a lot of people. Yeah, and I, I mean, honestly, like even the color options, uh, this has Brooklyn gray pink color, which is something that was new to most BMWs last year. So um, I like that they're really just adding those little bits and features in, even though it is most likely on its last model year uh, for 2024. Now, as far as the air ball is concerned, um, it is going to be just a few of the technology elements in here. Um, BMWs have certainly moved on to the more tech focused cabins. Um, if you're not a huge fan of tech, you won't mind this X3, that's for sure. But if you're wanting the latest and greatest, it's not going to be on this model. Right. And that's not to say this is like really out of date. A lot of that is just relative to the other models in the lineup, which they are very aggressive about updating. They have updated the infotainment system several times in the last um, few years. And there's a new version that's coming out real soon. So it's just kind of one of those things, like if you're in the know, you might notice that compared to the X5, this is certainly gonna feel like a, a step down in technology. And lastly here, in regards to your warranty, it's gonna be BMW Signature Warranty for your 50,000 miles for both your basic and powertrain. Additionally, BMW does give you three years of complimentary maintenance. Now, as far as pricing is concerned for the 2024 BMW X3, they're not gonna raise the price too much this year, so you can see those prices on the screen right now. If you want what is probably the volume seller, this is the uh, X3 xDrive 30i model. It's going to start at $48,900 for the 2024 model year. And then once you add in quite a few options in typical German fashion, we're sitting at about $59,500 as tested. Now, of course, if you want uh, the most performance, choose the M40i model, and that's going to cost about $10,000 more than the standard 30i model. Now, if you're looking to buy a BMW X3 or any new vehicle, the next place you should go to is carconfections.com slash new car quotes. Now on there, we have a tool that will allow you to be connected with dealers in your local area to get you the best price on your new vehicle. It will also give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for negotiating with your dealership. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description. Well, guys, that's going to be it for our in-depth review of the 2024 BMW X3. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. We really want to welcome you into this Car Confections family because we do a lot of car reviews and we have a lot of fun on this channel, so I'm sure you won't want to miss out. If you're already a part of our family, thank you so much for your continued support. And we want to encourage you to uh, visit our website, carconfections.com, as well as our TikTok and Instagram pages. We'll catch you next time as we we'll sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.